This is the real life of James CD. And I happen to be the real James Heaney. Is... Hello, I'm James Heaney and this is my vlog. Um, I tried to start this off as like a how to sew video because I'm sewing my girlfriend's pants right now, her pajama pants. But I found that it was way too difficult to try to show on camera uh, needle and thread and whatnot. So what I would say to you is that if you want to sew something, just do it. It's really not brain surgery. You just, uh, you got to be careful putting the thread through the needle. And then you just kind of do a corkscrew around it. And I mean, I'm sure there's better ways to sew than I am, but it gets the job done. Um, turn it inside out. That makes it so that the seam does not show as much. These are pajama pants, so nobody really needs to... It doesn't need to look great. You just need it to function. You need to cover your body when you're sleeping so that all the bed bugs you have... Oh, damn. Damn it. Uh, so that all those bed bugs don't uh, get through your, your, your... Don't bite you. And I don't know if that actually helps, but it's theory. Uh, and for the record, I don't have bed bugs. I wouldn't have bed bugs. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't have bed bugs. I one time thought that we might have bed bugs, and I checked the internet to see what the signs of that are. And if you have bed bugs, it's actually pretty clear because you'll see uh, an infestation underneath your mattress. Um, but we do have spiders galore in our beds. Uh, I've been bitten several times by spiders, and it makes me mad because I don't believe in killing spiders indoors, but I half feel like they've started a war with me. And now, if they're indoors, I hate to say it, I kill them. I don't kill them outside. But I've gotten a few spider bites out here in California. I had one roommate when I first moved to California. I lived in a place that I've mentioned before. I called personally Happiness Hotel uh, after, you know, Muppets... Uh, the Great Muppet Caper? Is that where the Happiness Hotel was? I believe it was, yeah. So the reason was that I lived with like 20 people. And particularly where I lived in this uh, house was in the garage. And I shared that garage with four other men. And at the time I was only 20. And I was by far the youngest person that lived there. Most of them were... Most of them were illegal immigrants... Um, if you've heard this story, feel free to tune out. Uh, I'm going to tell it. So I lived with mostly illegal in immigrants. And uh, not to sound like a stereotypical person myself, but I would expect when I hear that, um, especially in Los Angeles, that those illegal immigrants would probably be from Mexico. And that was not the case. It was a eye-opening thing to me. Uh, I, we had people from New Zealand, we had people from England, we had somebody from uh, Iran, we had somebody from, uh, where else, Hong Kong. There was a, it was a menagerie of people from around the world. And all of them, I wouldn't say they were screw-ups by means, but none of them had their stuff together. And I can't blame them, because when you move countries, I, I'm not... I'm not brave enough to live in a different country. But you have to work off the grid if you're an illegal immigrant. Um, we did have... We had somebody from North Africa. And there was a couple people that weren't illegal immigrants. But they were not young. There was They were drug addicts. They were recovering drug addicts that were staying there. Um, but back to the story. I lived in the garage. And the garage is a great place for spiders. Now, this story, I have a hard time believing myself, but I saw the wound. Uh, this gentleman that I lived downstairs with, and there was definitely spider infestation in the garage, had gotten bitten, and the wound started turning into this, like, spreading, like, insane, like a hole in his arm, like almost, not a gunshot wound, but a giant burn or something. And uh, he went to the doctor and they said that it was a brown recluse spider. Since then, I've researched, and brown recluse spiders are not supposed to be in California. Um, so I wonder to myself if that was really the true story or if maybe I misheard it. Because I know black widows are out here, but I don't think that... I don't know. I don't think that's what a black widow would do to you. I'm not entirely sure. But nonetheless, 
when that happened, I ended up having to move out of that place because it was a little too scary. Uh, there was also um, one of the, uh, we had an Iraq veteran um, from the war that was there. He was a really nice guy when he was sober, but he had a drinking problem. And this is from the original Iraq war in the, in the 90s. And uh, so it wasn't like he had just gone over there or anything. He was back for a while. And there were times that he had gotten into like fights at the apartment with people um, when he was drunk. He wasn't. We nobody was really supposed to be drinking there, um, and I think it was for that exact reason. But with that coupled with somebody getting bit by a spider, coupled with the fact that like I shouldn't, ju I just shouldn't, I simply should not be living with twenty illegal immigrants. It's not um, a good place to live. So I got out of there. It was cheap rent, though. I paid $325 a month to live six blocks from the ocean. I live closer to the ocean now, but I spend a great deal more money than that. Uh, and my rent just got raised 3%. Hooray. What are the odds of that? I've been here for almost eight years, and they've never raised our rent. Less than one month, three weeks after I lose my job, we get a notice saying that they're going to raise our rent by 3%, which 3% isn't that much. But uh, my apartment was 1350 so 3% of that ended up somehow being um, like about $40. So now our rent is uh, $13.90 uh, and 50 cents. Like, come on. Just do me the favor and make it thirteen ninety or thirteen ninety one. I feel like you're picking pennies at me if you're making it fifty cents. Uh, but what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Um, one thing I was gonna, I was thinking about talking about on the news show today, uh, but I decided not to because I'm trying to keep the news show from getting into politics. But uh, this is a vlog, so I can make this a little bit about politics. So Fox News. It was not a. It wasn't Fox News, the major cable network, but it was a local Fox News channel, one of the one of the um, anchors uh, was talking about. I believe Katy Perry. It might have been Lady Gaga. I get the two mixed mixed up. I actually, and I don't care if you judge me. I think both of their music is good. I I like almost all kinds of music except for when people scream. There's something about screaming that I just can't take. Um, I don't like it. But nonetheless, she was talking about Katy Perry, and she's like, uh, something about couldn't understand what was going on with all that Jigaboo music. Now, Jigaboo, I had never heard the term before, but the other news channels were eating this up, saying that it's a racist term, which I'm not going to argue. It was before my, I've, I've never heard of it. Um, and they were saying this person should, like, before you say anything, you should know what words mean. And I believe some of that is true, but I also believe that, and, and this, this is something I've always believed in, is that language is about communication. And I think that nobody really thought that she was saying something racist about Katy Perry or Lady Gaga, whoever it was. Um, perhaps the word she was thinking about was hubbubaloo, which... I haven't looked up. I don't really know what it means. I usually think hubbubaloo or hubbaloo, hubbubaloo is something like just chaos. And I can understand that maybe that's what she was saying. But what you're trying to do is communicate an idea. And I don't like it just doesn't make sense that they want to jump on on these people because then people are so afraid to say anything that they mean that then all of a sudden we're in those situations that we are with video game companies where nobody wants to say anything for fear that they're going to say something wrong. And I think that we should be willing to take risks if we're out there saying things that are offensive on purpose, then yeah, that person's an a-hole. But if we're just trying to communicate our ideas and our feelings in a situation and we're not alienating people, I think that it should be okay. And that is probably the only time you'll ever hear me defend Fox, uh, Fox News. Because between you and I, once in a while, I feel like they lean a little bit to the right. Not sure. I've just noticed sometimes they lean to one direction. Um, so... 
but I don't I don't think that 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 means they should be attacked when they when they speak when they say something that is an archaic term that nobody uses anymore, and and in the context wasn't using it in that way. So yeah, maybe sure she's an anchor she should know what word she's saying, but I don't want to be like let's cut to commercial while I search the dictionary to make sure this term that I'm about to say is the correct word. Just say it. I mean. I, I, I'm about to say some things that are offensive. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll stop myself. Um, but I'm just trying to make an example. Like, if you were to call uh, white people uh, yogurt stains, that's rude. Um, if you were to call uh, somebody that's Chinese like a lemon head, that's rude. It doesn't. It's not like a racial term, but it doesn't matter that it's not a racial term because you're saying something that is just ignorant and uh, you're an ass. Sorry, I'm trying not to curse. So, but at the same time, if you say something that is a racial term, but you're not using it in that situation, I don't think that you should be punished socially for that. Um, now, perhaps we can punish that person socially because we must all be Lady Gaga fans and Katy Perry fans, and you can't talk trash about them. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I can't name a single song by either of them. Oh, well, that's not true. Katy Perry, uh, she, I don't know, I can't name a Katy Perry song, but Lady Gaga does that one where it's, um, Ra, ra, shish, kumba, Bugs Bunny, ra, 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 brick a brick of fireworks, shish, kumba, bad romance. I think that's the song. Um, I might have butchered some of the words, but the truth is, is you know what I meant, right? Right. So that was a little rant on my part. Um, yeah. Uh, but I was thinking about that because I, well, the last thing I want to see is this. This uh, I screwed this up. Hold on. I can I can fix this. Maybe I can't. That's as good as it gets. Yeah, I don't want to see this person come out and have to apologize because I feel like that's a waste of my time and a waste of my intelligence. Like, I don't need to watch somebody uh, come out and be like, I'm sorry I used the word jigaboo. I didn't mean it. Obviously, you didn't mean it the way that people are saying. Um, but you can give a comment. Please keep it clean because I don't want anybody, like, I'm not looking to, I want people to be able to come here and have a good time, which is also why I don't want to do political stuff. Like, I want to make it so that we can just... Talk about our feelings, man. Talk about our feelings. I've got another audition today. Um, it's for I don't I'm not allowed to say, um, but it's a guy that wears a suit and tie with shorts, and that in itself is a little weird. And they want you to be able to have a unconventional mode of transportation. They listed motorcycle. They listed horseback riding. Uh, they did not mention skateboards. But I believe that's why my agent sent me the thing, because I'm a skateboarder. And we'll see if that goes in. I think I could do it with a pogo ball, but I don't know how far they want me to do transportation on a pogo ball. Have you guys ever played with a pogo ball? One of my favorite gifts as a kid was a pogo ball. The only problem was I didn't have paved roads where I was at when I had a pogo ball. When I was a little kid, I lived on a farm with a gravel road, and then right next to it was a highway. That you couldn't, if you pogo ball down a highway, you are asking for somebody to hit you. Because if I see somebody pogo balling down a highway, I swerve to hit them. It's worth 10 points. And that's a lot of points these days. Uh, I'm almost done sewing these. But yeah, there's nothing worse. Oh, and that also reminds me when the first skateboard I ever got, like I begged my parents for, I was like, please, I need a skateboard. Everybody's got a skateboard. I need one. So I got this amazing American flag skateboard. I don't know the brand. It was probably Walmart or something stupid. But nonetheless, it was a skateboard with an American flag on the bottom. And I got it home and I just was like, yeah, I'm going to rip it up. It had gravel roads. You cannot skateboard on gravel roads. I don't know if my parents ever said you won't be able to skateboard on gravel. I think maybe they could have, they might have said like it won't work on gravel. But I heard like, you can't do it. You're not good enough to skateboard. And I was like, I can do it. I'm going to be flying like Tony Hawk. Not the case. 
Not the case. Ooh, I poked myself. Oh well. I'll survive. Yeah, so my mode of transportation is a skateboard. When they ask me if I can do anything, I've ridden a horse twice, but not like I could do in a commercial. <laughs> it would be funny if I said because I have ridden a horse twice. If I told them, like, yeah, I can ride a horse, get on set, and just be a complete <laughs> liar is what it would be. I'd be a complete liar. Um, I've ridden a horse when I was a kid at, like, a I don't know, a circus or a carnival where they go around in a circle on the chains. And then I rode a horse once when I was probably about 23 or 24. My, I, have, I have family that's up in Wisconsin that lives on a farm, like full-fledged farm with horses and cows and chickens, the whole shit bang. And uh, I went up there and they let me ride the horse, but I had somebody like i'm like 25 23 25 years old something like that and i had somebody holding my hand while i was walking the horse i did not feel like a cowboy i did not feel like a cowboy at all um which reminds me of a very funny story and it just uh, it's kind of some insight to who i am there's this story that goes that when they get city people coming up because i know i said that i lived on a farm when i was a kid but it was a different kind of farm my parents rented a farmhouse while there was a farmer that did all the work there was no animals it was just a wheat farm winter wheat specifically and i think they rotated the crops and had winter wheat and like soybeans but i was not a farmer by any means i was just living on a farm because my parents rented the, the house for dirt cheap and um so and that was years and years before this so i go up there and they consider me a city boy so they've got this thing which i heard the story from like three different people and each of those three different people told the story to me like three or four different times so i've heard this story growing up and what it is that uh i'm trying to remember who it was I don't see my family in Wisconsin well enough, uh, often enough to remember everybody's name and exactly who said what. I want to say Bob. It's not true. But let's call him Bob, Farmer Bob. Uh, Farmer Bob brings city boys into the farmhouse where the cows are at and shows them the cows. And then he's like, oh, do you, have you ever seen a tit light before? And uh, it always the answer is like a what? A tit light? And then they say, come here, come here really close. And they get you to the udder, and then they spray you in the face with the milk. So I had heard this story uh, of more than a dozen times from different people in my family that had had this happen to them in the past. And there I am, and we're at the farm, and uh, Farmer Bob takes me into the, into the, I guess, barn. And he starts the story, and he's like, oh, come here, let me show you the, the cows and blah, blah, blah. Have you ever heard of a tit light? I did not let him know I was in on the joke. I got sprayed, I got startled, and the rest of the trip up in Luck, Wisconsin was like, I really got Jimmy, he really got it. Oh, God, that was worse than saying jigaboo. That's not how farmers talk, but... But that's how I felt because I the whole time I was like I never let it no, be known that I knew the story. I'm pretty sure my uncle and my mom knew that I knew, but we all kind of let it be there because you know, that's that's letting somebody have like it's okay to be the butt end of a joke um, as long as somebody is smiling and having a good time. I'm almost done with these pants. I'm pretty sure my girlfriend knows how to sew. Uh, she says she doesn't because she knows that I like to be the knight in shining armor. And here I am sewing it, feeling pretty good about myself. Similar to not ruining a joke if somebody knows the punchline. Um, but it does annoy me because there's a lot of things that she conveniently doesn't know how to do. Like, she doesn't know how to sew pants. She doesn't know how to, uh take out the garbage that's just she just doesn't get it she's like what how how do you do that like where it's like okay well i know how to do it she doesn't know how to oh, what else there's some good stuff she doesn't know how to do that's ridiculous i laugh it off because i don't mind too much i try to get her to watch me do it once uh oh reset the router 
Like, all you got to do, I'm sure that I'm not the only person that the internet sometimes, like, if you're using Wi-Fi, all of a sudden it doesn't work. You can call the cable company as much as you want, but their answer is always going to be the same at first, unless there's something seriously wrong with your internet. It's going to be unplug the router for eight seconds and replug it back in. Now, when the Wi-Fi is down, my girlfriend will wait for me. If I'm gone for hours, she'll wait for me to come home, and then she'll tell me, all oh, the internet's out. It's like you know what the what to do, and if that doesn't work, like then then it's out of my hands too. Um, unplug the router for eight seconds and uh, plug it back in. What else does she not know how to do? There's a lot of funny stuff. She doesn't know how to get a glass of water in the middle of the night. She's like, how do I do it? Wake up! Wake up! I'm thirsty and I don't know how to get water. So I do it for. Her. Last part. Uh oh, computer just went to sleep. Did I drop any frames? Maybe not. All right, well we're done. Let me just cut this thread. Always make sure to put your needles back in the box. You place it down and forget about it, then you don't even. You, it's going to be tough to find. That's. I mean, where the needle in a haystack idea came up. Came up. Cut this thread. All right. So from the outside, let's see if you can see this. From the outside, you can see that that seam is pretty nasty. But we flip this the other direction, And it looks pretty bad as well, but not for the same reasons. It's because some of the threads from originally being there are on the outside. So from the outside, that's what it looks like. It looks more like a pocket. My girlfriend is going to be so happy. So that's the difference. You can't see the difference. Oh well. Well, thanks for tuning in today.